if you're anything like me, you're just going to want to get down into what Bamboo Lab have just released. So let's not mess around with this one and get straight on into it. Firstly, what is it? Well, it's a 256, 256, 256 bed slinger that can produce a whopping 500 millimeters per second with full color AMS light. If you want that, the printer on its own is going to cost you $399, but with the full color AMS light combo, it's going to cost you $559. As per usual, my affiliate links are in the description below and tell them that I sent you. The first batch of these are set to sell out super, super fast. So if you want to reduce your daily dose of FOMO, drop down to the description and pick your printer. So now that you know all that key information, let's get on to the next question. But why a bed slinger? They said no more bed slingers. It's basically a Mark IV Prusa. What about that big Core XY that people keep talking about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this comes very much down to market share and making money. Securing market share is a bit like claiming the last slice of pizza at a party. Everybody wants it, but not everybody gets a piece. Smart companies strategically snatch up the prime market real estate, wielding the power to set the prices, dazzle with innovation, and make suppliers do the cha-cha. Once you've nailed the coveted market slice, it's all about clever pricing tricks, tempting existing customers with shiny new add-ons and expanding your empire into new territories. It's the business world's version of having your cake and eating it too. Just make sure that maybe you share a slice with your competitors. In this case, we're witnessing rapid growth fueled by some mind-bending thinking and engineering. It's like rearranging the furniture in a room that's been set for ages. Some incredible ideas might never see the light of day, causing a bit of chaos in a once fluid market. It's the price of progress, and sometimes a few cushions might get tossed in the process. The good news with this, of course, is that companies should start putting in more and more effort into innovation and change inside of this marketplace. So I guess watch this space. So let's talk about the building and assembly. The A1 is remarkable in its approach and kind of the same that we're used to, but also a little bit different. The screws, for example, that hold the bed and gantry in place can also be used attaching a 3D printed AMS light holder to the top of the printer. Well, just like this one here. Again, saving your desk space for this larger style printer that would usually take up without it. There is always a bone of contention about the weight on top of a gantry, and while I tend to agree with that, usually it's not seemed to make any difference of the quality of prints in this case. The A1 gantry and bed are actually in two separate parts, and in order to install the bed, you need to tilt the right hand side up and sit it into place. There are eight screws that then attach the bed to the gantry. There is a plastic cover that then slides on, covering the bed platform. Interestingly enough, it's not a linear rail on the Y, in this case, and similarly to the AnyCubic Cobra 2 line, they opted for metal bearings for bed stability. For cabling the electronics, the manual suggests resting the gantry down to access the bottom of the printer. Here we attach the Z motors and the hot end elements into the color coordinated plugs. The screen, which is already attached, then swings into place. I've not found a reason for the twist other than for packaging. The nozzle wiper, just like the A1 Mini, slides into place and is attached by a single screw. At this point, you can mount the AMS light to the frame if you choose to, but to be honest, as I said already earlier, I have mounted it above the printer, and like I said before, five kilos of weight sitting on top of that gantry. Well, I was a little bit dubious, but it seems to be fine, but of course, as usual, I'm happy to be proved wrong. So come at me, bro. Anyway, before we get on to the prints, let's talk about our video sponsor today, PCBWay.com. Cheers. Once again, we are thrilled for this video to be sponsored by PCBWay.com. Their unwavering commitment to excellence is evident in their exceptional products and cutting edge PCB innovations that they deliver. If you're a passionate maker seeking to turn your ideas into reality, well, PCBWay stands out as the go-to manufacturer. Their extensive range of services and dedication to quality make them the ideal partner for bringing your creative visions to life. Don't miss out on the opportunity to explore their offerings and discover how PCBWay.com can elevate your projects. Visit them now at PCBWay.com to experience the epitome of manufacturing excellence. Let's get down to business with print quality, problems, and my final thoughts. Let's get into it. Just like the other Bamboo Lab printers in my possession, they consistently perform exceptionally right out of the box. This has been a constant in my experience with the brand and the A1 and A1 Mini live up to that reputation. Over the past few weeks, I've extensively tested the A1 with a variety of prints ranging from a simple single color to multicolor projects, including recent experimentation with Hueforge. Throughout the process, the printer has not encountered any failures, providing an overall incredible user experience. Bamboo has once again delivered on a top-notch product, in my opinion. This perspective is based on several straightforward factors, encompassing the unboxing experience, usability, initial usage, and ongoing performance. The A1 consistently delivers, showcasing a company with a track record of producing excellent products. Unlike its Core XY counterparts in the P1 and the X1, well, the A1 stands out for its ease and simplicity. While opinions, of course, may vary on factors like open source and wireless printing, the A1 remains a solid performer in this price range, setting a high standard for its competitors that would find it challenging to match. 
So on the printing side, and certainly since I received the machine, I've been printing pretty much non-stop, including big things like this uh, spool holder, and of course the light boxes, oh, and this project, which is the Christmas Ferris wheel, which I'm hoping to get finished today, and what's currently printing in the background of this video. If not, then I will release it then as a short. It's by SK07, and I thought it was a cool little project as we head towards Christmas. The links, of course, to this model will be in the description below. So the few things we've printed out already, like the Ferris wheel, we've also printed out the platform, Form and these four carriages which if I zoom in here hopefully you can see the quality here um, that's at 0.6 layer height and it's uh, absolutely astonishing print and that's of course with five kilos balanced on top of it as well but of course that's not all we've got these light boxes which again are a few hours printing as well like this guy the Grinch we've got Nemo and of course here we've got Elmo Furthermore, we've got some Christmas kettlebells, which I printed for the guys at the gym. What else have we got here? We've got another light box for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which you might have seen on my socials, along with these cool guys, which are the turtles. I'll put up a proper picture of that now. So in the back here, we have the light box logo, and then with the Ninja Turtles, they're kind of like the old school snap models where you break them out of the frame and then assemble them. It's a well thought out design here, which is well focused for kids and adults alike. These amazing models are available for free download at makerworld.com. So I figured I'd show this as well, just how to build one of those turtles. It's like an old kind of airfix model, and again, downloadable from makerworld.com. I shot this, so I figured I'd show you it. Uh, this is Raphael from the Ninja Turtles, of course. Uh, super, super easy, and again, you could put this in a cracker, and kids are going to love it. Absolutely brilliant. Now, although I have printed quite a few models on this printer since I've got it, when I went to Smurf, um, a lot of the models were... Um, lifted away from the table should we say but i have got a couple more here and i've got some photos which i'll show you now so again these were kind of random test prints that i just selected the home sweet gnome and my first hue forge at at then i went on to stl flicks and downloaded this gnome and you, as you can see on the print there it's got some pink because the red hat blended quite unfortunately into the beard which leads me on to my first issue with the A-series printers. And we did touch on it a little bit before, and it's regarding the poop and the wastage. So to get that beard all fully white, I would have need to purge more, which would have created a lot more waste than I have in this box here. But again, the more you print, the more waste you end up with. And really, there's no great way of recycling this at this particular point in time. And... Well, basically, I'm stuck with kilos of waste at any given moment. One thing I will say, though, that is Bamboo have proved to us that they are pretty damn smart. So maybe there's a better solution than we've currently got. The only other issue that I've had is actually not with the printer. It's actually with the way that Bamboo Lab have put out the marketing for the A1. We thought we were getting one set of NDAs, and it seems that it's quite fractious among creators. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that, but what I will say is that Bamboo do tend to own the problems that are surrounding them. And it's something that a lot of companies do not do, that absolutely Bamboo own every single time. When there's problems with machines, when models have been released on their network, they have published and they have moved and changed things um, to great community advantages. And you probably won't see a huge amount of that, but they have reached out to me and a bunch of other creators and they're trying to make good on things that have happened. So um, again, I think this is an awesome printer and my final thoughts are these. Finally then, what is the A1? Well, in my opinion, it's a cutting edge 3D printer designed to bring high-end features to beginners, expanding the world of 3D printing. Booming with features and benefits in the areas of full color capacity, one clip quick swap nozzles, full auto calibration, active noise cancellation, active flow rate compensation, and a very impressive build volume of 256, 256, 256 squared. So who is the A1 actually for? Well, beginners and experienced users alike. If you just want a printer that just works straight out of the box, you can hit the button and go, well, I think you might have just found it. Let me know what you think about this printer in the comments below. Obviously, there's some stuff around market share there. You know, are people like Prusa and Creality wondering what's going to happen next. Um, I think everybody's very, very capable inside of this market. And in addition to that, I've got a ton of Creality printers coming up and I've got a Prusa Mark IV that I cannot wait to get out of the box. So maybe we'll do some comparisons between the two. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video and hopefully we will see you next time. Don't forget my affiliate links are down there. So if you do decide to get one, let me know. Let me know how you get on. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs> Where the music screams There's a rare